All right, that turned out to be a really exciting uh, session. And in fact, I sort of knew that Emily Campbell from GB was going to be in the medals. You know, I thought that Sarah Robles from the USA was going to be in the medals. And then, and then maybe the Korean and maybe the, the tie lifter. I didn't quite realize the shape that the tie lifter was going to be in. And that made things really exciting. In the snatches, we had Sarah and Emily, you know, facing down in the back room, which was pretty cool. The Korean just to the side and then the tie lifter to the side as well. So they're all pretty packed in, certainly aware of what each other was doing. Um, in the end, Sarah, I think, only made her first snatch, 115 kilos, which set her back considerably because the other three got into the 20s. We had Emily Campbell at 21. We had Young Sun Hee at 23. Uh, and then the Thai lift whose name is eluding me, we had up uh, 124 kilos. So she took the lead going into the cleaner jerks. In the cleaning jokes, it became apparent that Sarah was actually just not in the shape that she had been in at the Olympics. I spoke to Mike Catone, uh, I spoke to Tim Sword as well. They said that she basically had only been training for this for like the last five weeks. So she came out, hit her opener, uh, no, missed her opener, no, hit her opener, hit her opener and then, missed her second yeah. and then made it on her third, but she was a bit too far down. Emily came out, passed out after the clean, despite it looking easy. She hit 150 in the back room really nicely. Uh, she might have even hit 155. Interestingly, the tie lifter missed 150 in the back room. I saw Stu Martin, GB coach, watching it. He then ran back and told the other coaches, she's just missed, we might have a chance here. So that was exciting. Emily did come back out. I think she made... Made it on a second attempt. What did she make though? 56? 57. 57. Went up two kilos. On a second attempt. However, then it became very apparent that Young Sung Hee from, from uh, South Korea was in tremendous shape. Her clean is wonderful, pulls it very high, a little bit of a crash, but her jerk is literally just whoosh, flies up. So she, she took things away. Um, after a miss, the tie lifter came back, made a third attempt, moving up ahead of Emily. Emily would need 161 to beat her, but then the tie lifter hit another number, which meant that Emily would need 162. So with two lifts remaining, Emily came out for 162, cleaned it like a champ. And then, and I spoke to Dave Sawyer about this, her, her personal coach, along with Cyril Martin. He's never seen a blackout before, but she stood up the 62. She did it twice a day. And you could see her just start to go. And she thought, I've got one chance. She dipped and drove, couldn't get it, dropped, and then, and then fell to the ground and they had to get the belt off her quickly. So that meant that she was, you know, she was in third place. The Korean then came out, extended her lead, um, and yeah. Amazing lift to that Korean, certainly deserved the gold. Uh, but yeah, in the end it was South Korea 1, Thailand 2, Great Britain 3. Super's next. It's hard to explain just how that felt, what that means to the sport of weightlifting, what, what it meant to me, what it, what it meant to all of you. It means different things, but we just witnessed the greatest performance of our generation. Other than by Sinclair, it's the greatest lift, uh, the greatest performance ever. Just Lash Talakadze continues to do things that even I didn't think were really possible. You know, we talk about 500 kilos as a total. It's always slightly tongue-in-cheek to some degree, even though we want it, but it's days like today that make you realize that uh, it's, you know, legends are really, you know, possible. Like, he, he did something that I didn't really expect. I thought maybe he would snatch 224 and equal Taranenko's 266 and hit that 490, and I thought that would be mind-boggling. But to extend the snatch by two kilos, to extend the cleaning jerk by two kilos, to have the heaviest cleaning jerk ever, uh, to jump up the heaviest total of all time by four kilos, just staggering. So in the back room, he was there, the two Armenians opposite him. It's almost... I don't even know if I can even talk about the, the, the Armenians because it just, you know, they sort of pale in comparison to what we just saw. But Lasha uh, worked up to 200 kilos in the back room in the snatch. He also snatched up to 120, built up to 200 kilos, uh, which he hit for two singles. Then he went out uh, was it 208, uh, 218, 
225, seven kilo jump, uh, four reds on each side, a, myth a truly mythical snatch. When I entered the sport, the heaviest snatch ever was 216, the current world record is 214, he's up that by 11 kilos. Clean and jerk. I was in the back room filming again, and we've got a GoPro set up too. So we've got everything from two angles, every lift from today, which is great. Um, he hit 220, and then he hit 240, and I was honestly stunned. I sent a message to Sergey. I said, "Lash had just hit 240 in the back room. This is unheard of. Nobody hits 240 in the back room because that means you're opening super heavy because you don't hit numbers when you're clean and jerking that much that are close to what you're going to open at because it's too tiring." He hit 240 in the back room. And then I ran around, started getting lifts from out here, and he did 248, then he did 257 or 258, um, and, then, and then I knew it was on. And I held the camera at the scoreboard, I waited for it, and it switched like that, and it said 267. Um, and in a moment, you know, the stories of history all start rushing to you, you start remembering all of the biggest cleaning jokes ever. You think about Taranenko in 88, you think about Rizazadeh in 2004, you think about Lovchev in 2015, you think about Lasha in Tokyo, and then it all spirals up to this moment, the heaviest clean and jerk ever, the most weight anyone's ever put over their head in a competition. It puts to bed all of the skepticism when, uh, when people say he's the strongest weightlifter ever, and some people say, no, he's not, he's just lifted the most, but he's not as strong as this person. It's over, the game is over, the question's over, we, we just have an answer at this point, and the answer is Lash Tavakadze. 225, 267, 492 kilo total. He is the greatest weightlifter of all time. And what a way to end this show. What a way to end uh, the World Champs. See you guys soon. Final day today, <laughs> final breakfast that we're going to have at the International Hotel. It's a sad time, honestly. Um, we're a little bit disappointed. I'm going to miss how good looking the food looks. I'm not going to miss how it tastes. And that's not, an, and that's not a controversial thing to say. The food at this hotel, I think by all accounts, has been below par by like multiple standard deviations. But nonetheless, we found out that the, the cocoa things are basically the best in here. The milk's warm. But, you know, when there's only one thing wrong with, with the food, it's the food that you kind of have to stick to. Final day today, we've got the super heavyweights. Uh, so we've got Emily Campbell lifting at 1 p.m. for Team GB. I'm really excited for that. Um, obviously, partly because I know her and partly because she is our best lifter in, in, in the country. Um, certainly in terms of medals at this point, because she, she took the silver medal at the Olympic Games. She's got a shot for gold here. Um, not sure whether she can get it. We don't know what kind of shape the Thailand lift is from. 
Um, and then there's a South Korean as well who looks really, I think she can beat the, 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 the Korean lifter, the Thai lifter, that's what we don't know. And then on the men's side, we've got Lash Telekadze. So I'm going to be down there, I'm going to get a GoPro set up filming him. I'm going to be up the top filming him with my other camera. And then Nick's going to be holding that camera that he's currently holding now so perfectly and uh, film him from the side. So we'll get a lot of coverage of that. And that's at 4 p.m. And then the day is over early for our final day. What normally happens at these sorts of competitions, and no doubt it will happen today, is there'll be some sort of, um, there'll be like the closing ceremony at the venue, but then there'll be uh, like a ball, do you call it a ball? It's not, it's not a ball where you dress up, but like everyone's gonna get together, um, someone's gonna give some talks, there'll be some food, drinks, and sort of all the hotels will come together. People sub their virus trackies for their, for their jeans. You know, they start putting on their smart weightlifting house stuff like this, the champion stuff rather than the normal stuff. <laughs> Uh, and everyone kind of hangs out for the final day and drinks, has some music, might be dancing. Some people will probably get very drunk. We are unlikely to be those people because we have a flight. We've got to leave tomorrow at like 4 a.m. from here, something like that. No, not like that. No, not no, like 7 a.m. 6, 6, yeah. 6 a.m. Um, so, yeah, beautiful Uzbek day. Very sorry to be here on our final day, but you know, it's been a mad two weeks. Oh, I will say this actually. If you've enjoyed these videos, we're going to be doing them at every competition that we go to. So please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel because we've worked so hard for this. Like up every night till 3, 4 a.m. getting these videos out, um, hustling in the day to make sure that we're in all of the different spots to get all of this footage. Way to looking on at us. Um, and I'd say, yeah, we'd, we'd massively appreciate a, a subscription. And also, just in general, for supporting us, it's just weightlifterhouse.com. That's where we've got all of our products. Um, trusted by many of the best weightlifters, coaches in the world, our bars, our wrist straps, our belts, uh, straps, all that sort of stuff. Thumb tape, I've seen a lot of the lifters here using our thumb tape on the, on the actual competition platform, which is really cool to see in all different colors. So head over to weightlifterhouse.com for that. And then the final little push of the day, uh, the Uzbek t-shirt. Um, yeah, go grab yourselves an Uzbek 2021 t-shirt. Oh, and then also we're going to be putting up, you know, we put up a lot of footage over the last two weeks, but we, from every sort of, you know, oh, Lasha did this, oh, Simone did this, we have a full training session from them. So those are going to go up onto the YouTube channel as sort of bar to 180 type training sessions from all of these athletes. So we've got a lot more stuff from this World Championships going up, as well as the backroom stuff. Um, so make sure you stay tuned to that. And then if there's some footage that doesn't quite, it's not quite a sort of weightlifting house YouTube caliber, um, but there's like a 20 minute session from the Armenians, but they just didn't really do much, that will probably go up in the weightlifting house patron. So head, head over there if you want some extra, extra stuff. Anyway, um, 87 plus.